Hello friends, this video on water part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, when it rains, there is so much of water which is coming to the ground. So where does the rain water accumulate? Where does this rain water go? So a lot of, some part of the rain water remains on the surface, that is they remain on the land and then from land it might flow into rivers or streams. It goes to various water bodies like ponds, lakes, rivers, oceans. In fact, if there is no rainfall for a very long time, you would have noticed that the ponds, lakes, rivers, oceans, they all start drying up. Not the oceans, I would say, but at least the ponds and lakes, you can very evidently see that they start drying up due to lack of rainfall. Some part of the rain water also gets absorbed by the ground. And that is where we talk about ground water. Now, have you ever noticed that when you water a plant in a pot, what happens to that water? So, immediately after you have put a lot of water to a plant or on the soil on which the, uh, that plant is there, after a couple of minutes, you see that the entire water goes into the soil. So, the soil has absorbed the entire water. So, how does that happen? That happens because there are Pores, there are spaces within the soil particles and water is stored in those spaces. So in a similar way, whenever it rains, it falls on the ground and then a lot of water is absorbed by the ground. Now again, when I say ground, it means when it falls on the soil. Now if the same water falls on a, a mosaic floor, definitely it will not get into the soil. So in that case, the water will pass through the mosaic floor and maybe it will go to the nearby drain and from there it will enter a river or a stream. But if it falls on a, a muddy surface, if it falls on a field or it falls on yeah, an agricultural land, so in all of those cases, the water actually seeps inside the soil and that forms the ground water. That is why, have you observed that if people start digging below the earth's surface, now after you have dug up to a certain level, you start finding water below the surface of the earth. So that water which exists below the earth's surface is called groundwater. And how do we uh, fetch groundwater in the in form of wells, tube wells, hand pumps? So they all fetch groundwater and make it available for us. So if you, if you have ever seen a well, what is it? So you keep digging below the earth's surface, you reach a certain level where you can find water. So you still dig a little more and then that's how you construct a well. So every time you go to that well, you are able to find some water there. So that's groundwater. So now based on whatever we have learned so far, we can understand the entire water cycle now. That how water moves from one part of the earth to the other, how it uh, circulates between air surface and below the earth surface. So movement of water within the earth, when I say within the earth, it would include on, in the atmosphere or in the air, on the surface of the earth, below the surface of the earth. So how it circulates between these three regions. So let us see how exactly the water cycle takes place or how exactly the circulation of water takes place. So from the land, so from the land we see that evaporation takes place because of which liquid water gets converted to water vapor. So evaporation is one such process and the other process is transpiration. So transpiration and evaporation. So as a result of these processes, water vapor gets collected in the atmosphere. Now what happens to these water vapors? So all these water vapor, they condense to form clouds. So these water vapor condense to form clouds. And how this condensation happens? It happens at a greater height where the temperature is low enough for condensation to take place. So as a result of condensation, cloud formation takes place and then these clouds result in the rainfall. So when the clouds become very heavy, they cause rainfall. Now as a result of rainfall, what happens? Water gets collected on the land 
and then these water from the land flows down into the water bodies and rainfall directly also falls on the water bodies again the water which is present on the water bodies from there again evaporation happens during sunlight and then again the same process so water vapor gets collected in the atmosphere so with evaporation water vapor gets collected in the atmosphere as it is a condensation happens again cloud formation and again rainfall so this is like a cyclic process so evaporation transpiration all these result in a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere these water vapor they condense at a lower temperature at very high heights at good heights and result in the formation of clouds when the clouds become heavy enough they cause rainfall and then again rainfall fills the water bodies and again evaporation of water takes place in the presence of sunlight so that's how the entire water cycle keeps continuing and this cycle never stops so this is a continuous process it keeps taking place all the time thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again